Today we will have a class talking about a little bit like a fish. We, we mentioned the drone and the uh, croakers. They kind of a fish family. They do have uh, otoliths, the ear stone in their brand. I mentioned him last week. We're talking about a little bit that and we talk about some information about lionfish and we will introduce you a sea turtle. That kind of sea turtle is very impressive creatures. And then we will go to overfishing. There is a subject that means overfishing. I will show you some old pictures and compare with the pictures recently and you will see the quantity and the, the size of this kind of uh, ocean creatures has been decreased to a smaller size. And uh, I'll tell you about the influence of overfishing. So now it's 8 6, we begin the class, okay? First of all, I'll show you my, my screen. This is the red drone. You can see it's, it's a beautiful size. Beautiful size and uh, looks like a strong fish and healthy fish. Uh, but this kind of fish doesn't exist in Taiwan. This is the original one, native uh, creature in Taiwan called Mian Yu. In English, it is a brown crocker. The crocker and the drone is actually the same things. Okay, they belong to the same family. And you could see here is a Chinese character. It says, stone hand fish which means this kind of a fish has a stone in their brand in their hand and here is the place i show you here is the fish eyes fish brand their school and this is their ear just beside a little bit of upside uh, on the back of their brand and there are some tiny stone normally a pair some of them have a three or four it depends on the uh, species, but normally they will have a two, a pair of uh, otoliths. This is a scientific name, otoliths. And uh, it's made by carcel carbonite, again, like the coral, like the shear. Uh, it's made by calcium carbonite. And this kind of uh, otoliths, the ear storm, will be growing up become a bigger size following the age of this fish. So the elder fish will have a bigger otoliths and they'll have a pattern, small pattern, like the earrings of a tree. Here, if you watch it closely, here is a one circle, two circle, three circle here. It's different pattern. This pattern recalls their age. So once we catch a fish, but we don't know how old he is, we check the otoliths. Oh, typically only in this family, huh? this drone family, this croaker family, and we check their age by checking their otoliths. And uh, I think you guys should have this kind of a basic knowledge. So I want to test you by a question. Is the elder fish with bigger size. Answer me, please. Shelby, you say yes. The elder fish has bigger size. How about others? Rita, you say yes. Do you mean bigger, like body size? Yes, like body size. I mean, yes, body size. The elder fish have a bigger body size. Sorry, I didn't announce the question clearly. Hmm, you guys all say yes. But do you know what? The answer is no, not really. In the real world, for example, a tree, a hundred years old tree can be smaller than a tree only two years old. Why? Because their body size depends on the nutrition they took and depends on the condition of their environment. So even a fish has a smaller size, doesn't mean it's younger. But normally, the elder fish with bigger size. 
So it's causing a problem, right? We couldn't just catch a fish and say this big one is elder one. So scientists have to check the several part to define their age. First, their scale, their scale on their body, they pick up a scale. The scale also have a pattern, Yulin also have a pattern, and uh, let's record their, their age. Uh, the other place they will take is a spinal, have the DJ Gu, it's their born, their born in their body. And uh, for the drone family, they will take the orderlies to define their age. And I have a memories. I have experience living in Jinmen County. Jinmen County was a, a location that, that produced a lot of giant yellow fish, Da Huang Yu. This kind of a uh, wild yellow fish belong to the drone family too. And you know the giant, this, this typical species named the giant yellow fish also have a name called the panda in the ocean, which means they are extremely rare. Um, it's an expensive, extremely expensive fish. They can grow as the size of a two meter long, very huge one. And uh, a fish with less size, a single fish with less size can be white about 100 kilograms. Very big and very heavy fish. And one single fish can be sold like uh, 10 million New Taiwan dollar in one fish. That's kind of extremely rare species. And here I show you a picture in the PowerPoint slide here. The otolith. Otolith is also a symbol. Uh, the otolith of this giant yellow fish is also a symbol of love, uh, typically in Jingmen County. In Jingmen, the people put this fish a You can see the shape with this pair of otoliths just creating a heart shape. Uh, and the heart shape can be divided into two parts. So the boy take one part, the girl take the other part and combine together, they become a heart. So it become a symbol of love. Uh, because German County normally before, I think uh, 40 or 50 years before they are poor county, they don't have money. So they don't have money to buy some gold or diamond to be, you know, to do the proposed. So they use the kind of autolis to create this, like earring or pendant for lover. Okay, this is my memory, but we couldn't even catch some wild, wild yellow fish, giant yellow fish right now. They are almost extinguished in wild. There are only two. Sea water fish are published as invasive species. I want you to tell me why. Invasive species means it doesn't live in the original location. Maybe people import it or it travels by current, by air, by some other kind of a matrix. Anyway, no matter how, this kind of a new species never exists in local place. Now, shows in this place, in this location, and it highly affected the original one. They sharing the same food, and definitely the invasive species is higher produced abilities. They have a more child, they can have a you know, bigger size or stronger, and they will affect it the original one. This is a so-called invasive species. But the question is, why there are only two kinds of sea water fishes are published as invasive species? Many, many kind of a light water fishes was published as, as an invasive species. Why? Highly species? No, not really, no. 
Kyle, sorry, your answer is wrong. Anyone else want to give me the answer? 我的问题是，目前全世界只有两种海水鱼 ，sea water fishes， 哦，只有两种海水鱼被发表说是入侵种。为什么只有两种海水鱼呢 ？Not the right living condition. No. 那 actually light water fishes like goldfish, goldfish in our fish tank, goldfish can be an invasive species. There are many many kind of、uh, light water fish. They took over another fish's food source. Shelby, you misunderstanding my question. The question is why there are only two kind. We have many many. Kinds of light water fishes as invasive species and be highly researched, but only two kinds of sea water fishes are invasive species. Yu Xuan, your answer is they are invasive animals. No, they are not invasive animals. That is not the answer. Ocean is too big. Like last chance, they travel place. They shouldn't be. Ah,、uh, actually. Your your answer is close, but in wrong direction. <laughs> okay, you guys thinking about that? A river have its own path from the mountain to the ocean. Okay, this is one source of light water. A lake have a typically location. Only the raindrops goes in. Only the river goes in. Maybe a river goes out. So, old light water fish normally be limited in certain location. They won't have chance to travel. If I'm here, I never travel to another location. I will never have a chance to become an invasive species, right? They maybe not the survive before the reach the ocean. Probably, probably. Okay, the correct answer is: if I'm a light water fish, light water fish, I won't have chance to travel the whole world. So I'm located here. You are located there. If anyone brings me to your location, I may have chance to become. Invasive species, but if I'm a sea water fishes, before you move me from here to there, I already have chance to travel in the whole world, right?、Uh, except the Dead Sea, except the、um, Mediterranean Sea, Mediter Mediterranean Ocean. The other ocean, like Indo Pacific Ocean, like、uh, Pacific Ocean, like other oceans, they are connected to each other already. So, as a sea water fish, I can travel. I can migrate it to almost whole world. So, before you wanna move me from certain location to another place, I already have a chance to do so. And the reason I select. This place to leave. That's because I try other location, but I couldn't survive. So I'm living here. Okay. Once I settle down, I don't want to travel. I don't want to travel again. And even even that, the ocean connect to each other. If there are several location for one species can survive, I can survive. In location A and B and C, already these three parts will have this certain creature. Understand me? Okay, I will explain in Chinese again. Um, 淡水鱼其实是被从淡水鱼开始讲，淡水鱼是被环境局限的，它只能住在河川里面或是湖泊里面。那河川 A 跟河川 B， 湖泊 A 跟湖泊 B 本身不会连接，但是对海水鱼来讲，就是。七大洋早就已经连在一起了
啊，我们有洋流，我们有各式各样的连接，海水本来是连就是连在一起的，所以鱼可以从这个大洋游到另一个大洋。那如果环境适合，它就会住下来。所以如果这个大洋里面有三个或四个环境适合一个物种，那这个物种早早就会在这些地方住下来了。而他们住下来之后，他们根本不会想要到其他地方，因为其他地方基本上他们都试过了，但是他们并没有办法好好的生存。所以海水鱼很难变成入侵种。Now you understand the seawater fish already connect to the each other, so they will have chance to meet each other long, long time ago. So once they choose to settle down, they won't travel again. So why? Okay, now go go back to here. Why the red dawn become an invasive species? To the brown quaker, and what kind of influence it cost? The reason this red arm goes to Taiwan. Okay, okay, <laughs> this red arm and the brown quaker uh, both located in Taiwan in the Donggang area, in the in the county Pingdong. It's a small fish town named Donggang. And you could take a boat to Xiao Liu Chou. There, okay. They have fish market. They have a fish aquaculture industry. Which what means the aquaculture industry means they farming fish. They farming fish in the ocean. They use a net to create a limited space and put. The young fish into this location, and the current will bring the nutrition to them regularly. And sometimes the people will throw in some other fish bite or some kind of food, typically nutrition for a certain species. This kind of process named fish farming. And it's also named the aquaculture industry. Okay, the aquaculture industry focus on the red dawn because it can grow very fast, much much faster than brown cockers. So they import it and put it in the fish farm in their ocean in the Donggang location, and they grows up. But you know, Taiwan we have typhoon. So once the typhoon come here and attack the sea coast. It breaks the net. Those fish farmer doesn't have chance to collect it all the fish back, so they just released. They just run away from the net and into the real ocean. And in the real ocean, the red dawn meet brown croaker. They didn't fight. They didn't fight. They stay together peacefully, but. Both of them used the otter lips as their ear to feel the fi vibration, vibrations, and to distinguish it their descent species. But the red dawn make louder sound. Oh, their 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 otter lips in their brain will keep shaking and make a noise, making noise and tell their. The, their, their friends, I'm here. I'm here. Come to me, right? Okay. The brown cocker do the same things. The red dawn do the same things. But red dawn make too much noise. Could you imagine you are in a very loud music party and you couldn't speak to your company to your friend? This is the situation brown cockers face because there are too many red drums. Making noise together, so the brown croaker could not even hear their friends. If they couldn't hear each other, they won't have chance to mate to breeding their children. So the brown croaker, the number of brown croaker in Taiwan in Donga district, has highly reduced after the red dawn shows. So this is one invasive species. Okay, do you honest me? Do you all understand me of this situation? This is one invasive species. 
So if one typically species become an invasive species, what can we do to reverse the situation? And why we don't try to reverse it? You know, we import red worms. We import red worm, this fish, because we won't eat their meat. And it looks delicious uh, for me. I'm a cook. So even I see a raw meat, I will feel they are delicious because I know how to cook them as a food. But maybe for you, they are not, not kind of delicious, but okay. Well, basically people think they are delicious, so they import it. And even they release the like gum, they run out on the net to the natural. And then they'll start breeding their child. We could still eat them, right? But why we are not eating them? Okay, there is a weird truth that fast growth fish taste not so good. So compared to brown cropper, the red worm, the meat of the red worm is a little bit too hard. Uh, and the Taiwanese don't like the, the flavor it shows. So the fishermen intend to not catch red worm or the red drone can only sell a lower price, much, much lower than brown quaker. So yes, now we are trying to invent some kind of a Chinese food dishes to you know, improve the flavor of this red drone. We try to eat them, we try to you know, reverse the situation by eating all of the red drone. Okay, this is one invasive species. And uh, there is the other one. Anyone have idea which species is the other fish? I want to talk about it later. Rockfish? No. Okay, the answer is the lionfish. Here is the lionfish. I think you all see the lionfish, right? Before, right? At the last I think you, 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 you saw them in aquarium. Definitely you, you have a chance to see them in aquarium. They are big size, they are pretty, and they are like the flag in the ocean. They're floating around in the in the they're floating in the ocean and their fins open wildly like a flag. Floating there. Very beautiful one. And they have a Spatial pattern like a zipper, but they are not as keys as a zipper. This kind of fish normally located in Indo Pacific Ocean. We can see that in Taiwan, in the south part of Taiwan, in Kandini and Hanchun, they are living in tropic ocean or a subtropic ocean. So I think 20 years before, 20 years before, uh, the south part that uh, from Taichung, from the center of Taiwan, Taichung to the southeast part, we all can see this kind of land fish. But right now, I think even in Taipei, in the Dongbei Jiao, it's the north part, we could see land fish too, because the seawater temperature rising. So they will have chance to live in, in the northeast coast in Taiwan right now. Okay, but in Taiwan, in Taiwanese island, the lionfish did not become the invasive species because normally they can swim surrounding the Taiwan if the temperature, if the situation is right. So they're already here. So they are not invasive uh, species. But in Caribbean Sea, Caribbean Ocean, there wasn't have lionfish. They don't have that before. The aquarium industry in Portland as a pet. Because you can imagine if you have a seawater tank and you could put in a beautiful lionfish inside, it's quite pretty, right? If you could feed in them, it's quite pretty. And they, they eat meat only. So if you feed them fish meat, they will bite it, they will attack it. This kind of action, this kind of movement 
for some people is very attractive. So the aquarium industry in Portland from Indo-Pacific Ocean to the Caribbean Sea. But it caused a problem. Because in Caribbean Sea, they don't have lime fish before. All the tiny fish, all the small fish in the coral roof never face this kind of an enemy. They don't know how to survive from their attacked. And the lime fish, named the lime fish, the reason they are named the lime fish, definitely not because they're looking. They didn't look like a lion, right? Their pattern is much more like tiger or zipper. It doesn't look like a lion. But the behavior of this fish looks like lion. They will navigate around the coral roof. They were swimming around the coral roof. Located their target. And they were invited their friend to cooperate, to hunting small fish together like a lion. And also they are on the top of this food trend like a lion. So they are landed lionfish. So what happened with lionfish the first time they go to the Caribbean Sea? They finished all the smaller fish. And you may not know they can swallow very big size fish, almost the same size as they are. They can swallow it. How? If you search the otoliths in the Google, you will see there are many kinds, different size, different type of otoliths of fish. I use the keyword to search lion features in the mouth. You can see they are opening the mouth very wild. And they will sudden open their mouth, create a bigger space, which a negative vacuum spaces that will suck in the seawater, including the smaller fish. So I prepare a link. You can see how they swim. They float in the water, very slow, not in a hurry, and they located their target and slowly move. And this kind of small fish doesn't have any kind of warning. They don't know to how to run away because they never face this kind of a natural enemy. Right? You can see the smaller fish doesn't know. They have to run away. And also the fin of this lionfish, waving like a seaweed. So they didn't realize it's dangerous things. They didn't know how to avoid its shape of fish. Okay. So we now have this problem. We have a too much lionfish. Let's lift mop off the original uh, creatures in Caribbean Sea. So, the lionfish there, they didn't exist in that environment. They don't have a regular uh, natural enemy. So what can we do to try to you know, reverse the situation, try to reduce the number, the quantity of lionfish? Do you, have, do you guys have any idea how the people located in Australia, in those countries, uh, surrounded the, the Caribbean Sea, what the lab can do to reduce the quantity of lionfish? Give me your idea, please. Please tell me if it's in Australia, the Caribbean Sea has become a very big problem. They eat all the small fish. So you think they can reduce the number of fish? To do extensive fishing in the area of lionfish, Mm, Tom, your answer might not be right because you want to catch them. But if you use the fish net, you could not identify which fish you catch. You catch all of them, right? Um, use a little natural enemy. Uh, Henning, uh, okay, Henning, your, your, your answer is quite right. Using their natural enemy, but it doesn't have natural enemy in. Caribbean Sea. 
in Indo-Pacific Ocean. So what is the land enemy? Okay, in Indo-Pacific Ocean, maybe some groupers with bigger size, bigger land, land fish can be their natural enemy. But they prefer other fish without the poison. And you can see they have a vernum gland, vernum gland on their fin. It's a stink on their fin. Uh, they have poison inside, they have toxic things inside. If a uh, normal fish want to eat them, they will be stink and be poisoned. And they will pass off. And they will become, the, the enemy will become the prey for the slime fish. So the grumper with a bigger size may be their natural enemy. And some bigger size shark could be documented by this problem. Yes, Jala, you're right. The shark can be their natural enemy, but all the fish have choice. They could choose other kind of a species, not land fish. And remember, during the very long period of evolution, all the fish located in Caribbean Sea has got used to eating different kinds of fish, land lion fish. So why they gone eat lion fish as food? So if we want to bring another predator, might be the new creature you bring in here could create a new problem, right? So you better find something like already here and teaching them it watch the word I use to teaching the creature la layer they have potentially can eat lamb fish. You just teach them to eat lamb fish. It's a weird opinion, right? A fish can be teach, a creature can be teach. Did you ever thought about that? You know, the, the fish, the goldfish, the fish we're using as a pet, the fish you seeing surround your life, and you might not, you might think they have a lower integrant. They, they have a, they're not so wise, so smart to be teached. But the truth is, like a grumper, grumper can grow like a 60 to 70 years old, a very big size. Also like a pickup, like a trunk, less size, like it grows to five to six meter long, a grumper, shibanyu. And the grumper we eat normally only have a 30 centimeter size. And the reason we eat that smaller one is because like their meat tastes better when they are young. Okay, so in the natural, they can grow a very big size. And uh, so later I want to show you Negative catch them and remove them physically. Yes, first, Jala, your answer is right. At the very beginning, the divers try to remove them, try to catch them, but we suddenly find out they can breed in a very high speed. They have too many to catch. So let me show you another website. Here is a video that teaches shark and uh, eel to catch. Lambfish. See the diver interrupts here. The diver catch lambfish first and feed it to the shark. And sharks suddenly come here. They realize the lambfish is here and they want these things for the diver. Okay, the reason they chose shark because the skin in shark's mouth is thick enough to prevent the sting from lionfish. So the shark will not be poisoned. Okay, but you know, the shark at very, the video shows you is the, in the middle stage, in the middle stage of this training program. Okay, in the very beginning, the shark don't know lionfish can be eat. So they will have a 
the, the diver have to catch the dead lungfish and pretending it's different fish meat. They dig the lungfish into the fish block. And this diver regularly feed those shark with fish meat, digging with blood, and then switch the fish meat to lionfish meat, also digging with blood to feed the shark. So shark will accidentally eat lionfish as their food. They might feel a little bit weird, but well, it tastes like fish blood, it tastes like fish meat. So they have a little bit of confused. But after several times, they believe the diver gonna feed them good food. So they keep eating from the diver and they get used to the test of lionfish. And then the diver will just use the dead lionfish meat without digging with fish blood. So lionfish become lionfish itself. Don't have to pretend as other fish. And then they use this kind of a dead lionfish to feed the shark. Let's say in the second stage. And the shark will start getting used to eat the fresh lionfish. And then the diver goes away. The diver stop feeding them food, stop feeding them any kind of food. So those sharks getting hungered, they will have hunting food by themselves. They already eating live fish for a long period. So they will get used to that test. And once they go back to the coral roof, there is no other smaller fish because lionfish finish all the smaller fish now. So they could only find lionfish. So they, the lionfish become the only resource they could get in natural. So they start eating lionfish alive. This is the way, this is one way we training the shark and use them to help us to you know, erase the lionfish. Okay, and then it's still not quick enough. Training shark takes a long time and shark won't teach each other. You know, only small quantity of the small numbers of the shark know to eat lionfish, so it's not quick enough. Um, so we have to find another way to, you know, uh, erase this kind of a species. So the best way, the fast way is we create some dish. So here is a picture of lionfish dish. Here you can see the pattern on the fish skin. It's the same as this one. So it proves you this is a lionfish. And the lionfish can be very delicious. Why? Compare with the grumper, compare the shape with grumper, although they are not belong to the same family, but think their body size, their shape, very similar to each other, right? Only lionfish have a melon gland, they're poisoned, and the grumper doesn't have it. And, you know, for a hunger human, the venom gland will never be a problem. Thinking about the porcupine fish, the bloom fish, the, uh, the, the puff fish, Okay, they do have a venom gland on their whole body. But we could remove it. You know, those cook could cut it, could cut it away. So it won't be any problem if you want to eat them. Okay, the venom gland will not be a problem. So once you created a dish and start selling it, and most of the humans think it's delicious, and we become to eating lionfish, and we decrease this kind of a problem. This is the way right now we're doing it to fix this problem. Okay, here is some detail you compare with other different fish. Their venom gland. There is actually a, a shallow channel. And there is a venom gland. This one with a light gray color. A little light yellow gray color. And here is a gray color. They have different tombs. One tomb creates some liquid poison liquid and the art tomb is like a 
hype. And once the sting touches you, it squeezes the vinyl gland and pushes the liquid out into the tomb. And this tomb will stick into your body and inject the poison things into your body. This is the way they deliver their poison. Okay. Okay, we finished the two invasive uh, spaces. Do you have any question of these two invasive spaces for this slide? I have a very interesting question to ask you guys. Okay, but first I want to introduce something for you. Okay, the, 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 the title here says it's in the US, United States, Florida, K West Bay. It's a recreational fishing boat. What is the means of a recreational fishing boat? Which means, um, the captain will sail in a boat. They're driving you to their secret location and they led you to fishing use your hook. That's not a very serious way to catch fish. They could only catch a small quantity, not all of them. But compare with those pictures on the right top, 1957, here is 1980, and this is 2007. Compare with these three pictures, you can see the biodiversity in 1957 is much, much higher than 2007. And you can see here we have a shark. We have big size fish, small size fish, all kinds of fish. Normally, this recreation fishing boat will go out for one or two days, and the captain will prepare the food, the drink, and uh, the fish bait for you. And all the equipment you need, they could rent to you. And it takes about 150 US dollar per trail. It's worse, and you could keep all the fish you catched on your own. And you could also choose to sell it to the captain and earn some money back. And you normally, you will get more money than your ticket price. So in average trail of this recreation fish boat, you could earn, actually earn some money for your, yourself. So it worth to go out to fishing, right? But you may think about the captain will lose the money. He's spending the feed of gasoline and uh, using his boat, spending his time preparing the food and drink that costs a lot. So where the money from for the captain? You know, those fish, you, you hook them, you fish them by fish hook, will not highly injure their body with a completely beautiful fish body. This kind of a fish could sell to a very high level restaurant. They want that kind of high quality fish. So once, the, once you sell this fish to the captain and you go back to the harbor, and the captain will resell those fish to high level restaurant and earn more money. So it's a win-win size, okay. But the funny question I want to ask you is, you can see here is a parameter, shows you 50 centimeter long. Here's also a bar, shows you 50 centimeter long. Here is also a bar, it's a parameter to show you 50 centimeter long. So you can see easily, 2007, they have a smaller size, only few kind of a different fish. But in 1957, we have a lot different species here. Okay, so the question is, in this picture, 1957, how many shark we find in here? And the size of the shark. Please type in your answer. OK， 我的问题是在1957年的这张照片里面，你会看到有鲨鱼，对不对？然后呢，你告诉我这里面有几只鲨鱼？好，一九五七年的照片里面有几只鲨鱼，而且它们的尺寸是多少 
Shelby, I'm sorry, your answer is wrong. We don't have a 20 shark. And uh, it's the huge size is not right. I already have gives you a parameter to let you measure the size of this shark. So try again, 16, no. Killer, three sharks? No, sorry. Less than three, two sharks? No, less than two. There's no shark, sorry, no. Yes, we do have a shark, did you not lie to you? Jala, thank you, you got the right answer. 0 0.5 shark, yes. And layer size? Okay, I, I separated into two questions, okay. <laughs> Okay, Tom, how? See the picture, the picture won't lie, right? In the very right side of this picture, here shows a shark. If you have uh, any knowledge or culture from marine life, and you will see this is the shape of a shark. No, 1.5 meter, one meter, both wrong answer. No, it is a test for your awareness, awareness, awareness. Okay, sorry, awareness. If you see the pictures in detail and compare with this parameter, and you will see, you will know the size of this shark. Thank you, Xingfang. You also got the correct answer. In this picture, we only see half of shark half size of this shark and in half size this shark shows about 1.5 meter long so the total size of this shark will be three meter okay it's very huge size right it's deserved the name of land in the top size top location of the food chain Okay, so these three pictures want to tell you the, the biodiversity decreased. And uh, this is the old picture shows you the sawfish can be this size and the manta could be this size. And we have a lot of slot and fish. And we couldn't eat them in fresh. We couldn't eat all of them in fresh. So we make it a canned food. And the canned food means not so fresh fish in late age. So people who eat those canned food are the labels, are the fishmen, normally in the lower level in society. And then in higher level, people eat fresh food, fresh fish. So this is the way they catch lot of fish, too much, too many, so they could only create to cook as a canned food to store it for longer time. That was a long time before, it's 1938. But right now we didn't have that much resource. So what do we have? This is some, some memories they had. They all talk about the fish quantity and the size was reduced and decreased. Okay, this is the slides I showed you before in Kanding Nan one, we already, we, we, we was, having whale hunting industry layer. So this is the wheel. Hammond wheel like the hunt in Kanding Nan one. And I told you about a shifting baseline and I think you guys do take the note. So I will jump here. And here is an interesting slide. I try to finish it right now. This is slides talking about the sea turtle. Mexican Rancho Novo, Nuevo Bay. It's a Camps Riley, it's a Camps Riley sea turtle. It's a sea turtle. It's a typically species. I want you guys answer me quickly. What are the difference between between 1947 picture and the 2009 picture? You guys noticed the very common things in these two pictures. I, there, are, there are some bizarre answer I got before. Okay, some of my students told me, teacher, the picture in 1947 is black and white picture, and in 2009 is a colorful picture. Is it right? 
Yes, they are right. This is the difference between these two pictures. <laughs> they are not wrong. Yes, they are right. And some of me, some of students tell me, in 1947, it's a night time, and 2009 is a morning. Are they right? 有的学生告诉我说，一九四七年的照片是黑白照，二零零九年是彩色照片，他们也没有错哈。但是另外又有同学跟我讲说，一九四七年是晚上的时间，而二零零九年是白天的时间。这个论点是对的还是错的呢 ？OK， so you guys give me a different answer. Some say they are wrong, some say they are right. OK, so there is the other question I want to ask you. Sea turtle always Laying layer eggs during the night time, right or wrong? It's hard to recognize this night or morning due to this black and white piece. Ah, Yu Shen, you have a good point. It's hard to recognize it's night or morning due to this black and white piece. But the answer is during late period, during late early age, they could only take picture in the morning time. During the night, they don't have the flashlight, so it's morning. Okay, most of you think the sea turtle climb up to the beach to lay in their eggs only during the night time. The answer is wrong. Pictures won't tell the lie. There are so many sea turtle goes up to the coast coastline, go up to the beach, and they try to lay in their eggs. And this is morning time, right? This is a morning time. Don't tell me it's a night time. It's a morning time. And here is another picture shows you it's a morning time, right? So this sea turtle climb up to the beach, lay in their egg during the morning. Right, not at the night time. Okay, the education your education told you in elementary school, junior high school, senior high school. All the education tells you the actually the green sea turtle goes to the beach, laying their egg during the night time. And in your memory, you only recognize, you only remember the green sea turtle. So you think all the sea turtle. Laying their egg during the night time, but this is wrong. We have seven different kind of sea turtle. They 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 breeding their egg. They laying their egg in different period of a day. So why some sea turtle laying their egg during the night time? Why? Yes, actually, to avoid the predators is the correct answer. During the night time, normally they don't have much natural enemy, less natural enemy, so they could more safely, they could be safer way to lay their egg during the night time. But in this picture, they lay their egg during the morning time, right? And the reason is because they, in this beach, you didn't see many other species. And normally they have a huge quantity of a sea turtle. So with this large number, even they have some predators, only few eggs will be eaten. And the truth is, there will be only one sea turtle survive in 1,000. So they could survive. The young sea turtle will grow to the first year. And um, they have spending about 20 years to grow to a certain size. And uh, once they reach a certain size, they won't have natural enemy. Only human could kill them. Those three picture was taken was taken in the same angle. So the sea coat here is the same. Okay. So compare with these two pictures, there are still something different here. Okay. Here, see the pictures. Okay, so could anyone tell me what is the difference between the you know nineteen forty seven pictures and two thousand oh nine pictures? I already told you the answer is on the very right side on the top. The answer is here. 
Of course, there's some garbage on the beach, yes. But tonight, they have a salmon tetrapod. Tetrapod 就是小波块 you know. Salmon tetrapod. The side has been reclaimed. Yeah, you can do like that. Human put some artificial items on the beach. This kind of a things named salmon tetrapod. Tetrapod. Salmon tetrapod. 小波块 It's a typically name. So, on the with if people putting the little things here on the beach, if you are sea turtle, you're a good mother. And you will lay your egg here, here, or here. A or B or C. We have three kind of different answer. Okay, if you are the mother who lay your egg on location A, your child will die. Why? Because the, the the sea turtle will have to be, you know, a bit closer to the sea. The distance will be shorter. So like, yes, okay. Because it won't wash away. Yes, right. But also less space for the sea turtle to eat. Okay, let me answer your question one by one slowly. Okay, let me tell you. In location A, the 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 the, the eggs need warm temperature. Oh, okay, the 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 eggs, sea turtle eggs will be, you know, growing up, just depends on the temperature of the, of the sand. Normally in, in in Mexico, there's a Nuevo Bay, the sand temperature was around thirty to thirty five. This is a good temperature, but the sea water temperature is only twenty. During the winter time, and normally goes to twenty five during the summer time. So if you lay your egg on location A, they will have no chance to survive. It's too cold. On location B, you have a higher chance to survive. But if you face the high tide, if you face the high tide twice a month. Still, cold water will kill your eggs, right? So B is also a wrong place. It's not so good place. Only the location C will be a good place, okay? But in location C, now you see a lot of artificial things, and I told you the tetrapods here. Here, it's, I know it's not large enough, but here is some tetra. Part here that blocked the way of lots of sea turtles. They look, couldn't even go to that far direction to lay your egg. There is the sadly story. There's a news reporter finding in uh, California. They find the, the footprint of a sea turtle. This news reporter, um. Very happy to see a sea turtle footprint, which means this, this uh, this beach still alive. The sea turtle will coming up and laying their eggs, but she follows those footprint and walks for about three miles, and she discover a dead female sea turtle. This female sea turtle tried to climb. Climb up close to the this kind of a tetrapod, but she couldn't, so she died because she's so tired and lack of water and the temperature rising too high, she died. It's a very sad story. Once she reports it, and the Mexico government start realize this huge problem, so they remove all the cement tetrapod. You can see here. This is a picture taken in two thousand fourteen, and you can see the old sea turtle comes back because the this like a tetra part was removed. They have more chance to lay eggs in right place, so they can start rebreathe their eggs again.
right? It's a good news. Okay, so you will have chance to being a volunteer to help sort of the sea turtle. You can see now how they have a uh, incubation farm for the sea turtle eggs. If you become a volunteer for the sea turtle in Mexico, this is your job. You will uh, have a basically training. They will teach you some knowledge about the sea turtles for about two weeks. And you have one senior as your partner with you, your, your junior. Okay, the senior will assign you the job. It's actually a very easy job. Okay, the senior will point you. You will got a flag. You will got a flag and a pot and then, and then take. Okay, and you will go to this beach and the senior points you one sea turtle. Let's name it Susan, okay? Okay, the senior points you, Susan. And you have to watch this Susan. Climb up slowly from here, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, and then finally goes to the, the place she wanna lay in eggs. She finally is a perfect location and is spending about two hours to laying the eggs. And then once she leaves, 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 leaves during the nighttime, you will go here to dig up those eggs out and put in your pot and put a nant egg on it and on your flake and then bring them to the farm, the egg farm here and covers it with the white plastic film that keeps the temperature in the right way. This is your daily work. And you are spending about the half months to one month to do the same things every day. But the most exciting moment will be when they breaking their eggs, when the tiny sea turtle goes out, you will have chance to collect in your own sea turtle and then bring them in your pot and go to the ocean and release the sea turtle and your job is done. Okay, some people told me it's a very hard touching moment once you release the sea turtle, but you must have a lot of a patience so you could stand on those boring job in the first one month. Okay, so is anyone interested to be a sea turtle volunteer? Here is the link you could go check. They need some volunteers during the summer times. If you like, just go check it. Okay, here's just some knowledge of the sea turtle. Oh, there's one more interesting things I want to ask you guys. Those sea turtle on the beach are they male or female or both? Actually. All the sea turtle, when they goes back to the ocean, only female go back to the beach with only one purpose, laying egg. So all the sea turtle you see on the land will be female only. Okay, the male, once they go back to the ocean, they will stay in the ocean all of his lifetime. He will never go back here. Okay, this is an interesting knowledge you should know. Here is over over uh, is all of overfishing. Is anyone know the definition of uh, overfishing? The overfishing means you catch too much. The catching speed is faster than the speed of the fish to recovery. It's so called overfishing. And here is the pictures. You can see this is a mixed fishing. Normally, if it's a, you if you are a shrimp fishing boat, you only catch the shrimp. Only about 10% of what you catch is shrimp. Other things is garbage for you, like this shark, sacrifice for nothing. Lots of shares, lots of seaweeds was killed by your net for nothing. You only wanted the, the, the shrimp. And here is the resource. Here's some, uh, some data I can check. I, I found it on 2012. These pictures, this fig, this uh, yes, figure is a report 
from 2012. But here is the number, is the data I found on 2021. You can see the population now it grows to 7.9 billion and will be grows much more to 9.6 billion in 2050. So we have more and more population, we need more and more food. Okay, now Taiwan people, Taiwanese people consume about 77, 190,000 tons of uh, these products, at least um, aquatic products, including the shrimp and scallop and the fish. So all the things from marine, marine from the ocean is about 790,000 tons per year. And in average, every people eat about 34 kilograms of uh, marine life a year. It's a huge quantity. And we are the number fourth country in the world. You should know that. Then the number one is Hong Kong, it's China. Okay. And learned here is some information I could give to you. And I will send you the PowerPoint file. As a report says that we're raising a higher point for average consumer per person of fish. Here is okay, the, 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 the data for overfishing groups. And there are serious research report in this website, and I will send it to you later. Okay, uh, in this, this picture, show you we have a better equipment, better tour, better fish boat, but we have less fish. And all the data shows us the fish quantity and the layer size was highly reduced in recent decades, and they will decrease, and uh, we will have no fish no wild fish can catch from wild ocean. We could, all, we could only farm the fish. We could be the fish farmer and uh, we don't have wild fish. The wild fish will be highly poisoned by our chemistry that we release into the ocean or they are extinguished because of the overfishing. And they said in the, in the 2050, this will happen. So in our lifetime, we will see this happen. It's such a tragedy. Okay, I already told you that the fishing down to the food web, this side, this is slides I told you before. And this is the quantity of the common fish we eat surround Taiwan. It, uh, in Taiwan coastline, we could catch these fishes and the layer numbers you can see. This curve was, you know, highly dropped. This is also the other data I don't have time to talk. Here's the link you could check. Okay, what will cost if the, from the overfishing? You was normally uh, is spending 11 years for this kind of a fish to raising a good size and release a good quality of eggs. But now we catch them more and more. They didn't have time. They didn't have enough time to growing up. So before, in 1967, the researchers find they will uh, grow until they're 11 years old to raising their child and much child. Here you can see one tiny fish equal to uh, 100,000 eggs. So they're releasing more eggs. But for now, today, they reach only two years old, very small size, and less eggs because they don't have time to grow up. Here is some resort. The mature size of the number of eggs decreased. And the force laying egg early. Weakness disease, disease resistance because they didn't have more experience. You know, for a fish, for a healthy fish, they want to growing up to the 11 years old, they have to experience lots of things. And the natural eliminate them by the death. So only the best survive. If the best survive, the eggs, those survivors layings with better quality. So when they are young, they don't have much experience, their eggs are weak. Okay, in their body size, a fish could grow into a certain big size because they carry those genes to make them can be growth to a certain size. But if they only grow to two years old and laying eggs, this kind of a gene will be digest 
into a very low rate. So in the future, even they have chance those big size gene will be missed. Okay, the fourth is very interesting. Let's destroy the knowledge base of the cluster. Yeah, this cluster, which means the elder one will teach the young one how to hunt. And the, the elder one will find the location, the best location for their groups. If we don't have the elder one, the young one won't be able to get this knowledge. 